Hey there! Are you new to yoga and do you sometimes feel like you're behind when you join a collective class or maybe you feel uncomfortable and you're not so proud of yourself? My name is Ilona from the Play Pose B team and I have been teaching for the past seven years and I have seen a lot of you. So we see you. And here are some tips that I'm going to share with you into letting go of this feeling or maybe adjusting, helping yourself while this little bits of anxiety or feel of not being good enough arises for you. First thing first, yoga is about breathing, right? It's a practice that is exercised, is practiced to come back to yourself, to connect to yourself a little deeper. And why I'm saying this is because ultimately the first thing that we do when we come on earth is to breathe. And the last thing that we do when we leave this plane is to breathe out. So coming back to this breath, this initial breath. So whenever you need to, close your eyes and take a moment to breathe. This could be done in a few ways. You could use a child pose. You can use a standing pose in order to do that. But what is important is for your breath to be fluid, right? To be relaxed. And that will be the first sign that ah, I'm feeling a little bit of anxiety right now. And to drop this, come back to your breath. I have a lot of teachers around me, not only in yoga, but a lot of teachers. And we always, at least from the ones that I know and that I've been speaking to, is that we always appreciate when someone respects their rhythm and their body and their practice, right? So I, I don't know anyone who would get offended at you not following class by taking a moment to restore, by taking a moment to come back to yourself. I'm not saying to do your whole practice on your own by joining a class, right? I'm saying for you to take a child pose when you need to, stop a moment, don't do one vinyasa, these kind of things, right, that you can use. So first thing is follow your breath. Second thing that you can do is to close your eyes within practices when it's appropriate for you to do so, right? So this allows us to disconnect from the outside world and to kind of tune in into the inner world. And by doing this, I also understand, okay, what am I feeling right now? How am I feeling and what do I need? And maybe that would be again to take a pose or not. On a more practical way, things that you can do is either to stay right in front of the teacher, like this you have very direct access to what the person is saying, or to go on the back room, but make sure that you have practitioners that have somewhat of a honest practice already ongoing. Like this, you can also follow what they're doing. And like this, you don't feel maybe the stress in having to keep up with the class because you're at the back and not everybody's seeing you. That could be an option. But some of us also rather come to the front part of it so we don't see anyone else. And that could be also another way to not get into our heads because we don't see what everybody's doing. I'm just seeing what the teacher is doing, right? So that will, of course, depend on you. One thing that I would also recommend is for you to seek classes that are open classes, right? That are accessible to all levels. So we hear this a lot, but not all classes are actually inclusive. And what I mean by this is that you can come into classes and you hear the teacher saying, okay, inhale, upward facing dog, exhale, downward facing dog, inhale to plank, exhale, chaturanga. And if you're new to yoga and you don't yet know these terms, then it might be feeling like you're stressing or you're not, you know, meant to be there because you're not able to follow what's being said. So one suggestion is to seek a teacher that is cueing poses, right? Cueing poses with um, alignments that you want to have within your body and cueing within breath also. So you're really aware of, okay, when should I breathe in? When should I breathe out? And that's something that is actually very appreciated within classes, no? Having cues. Of course, if you have a teacher, for example, me, I like to give a lot of cues within poses. Don't take it all in at first, right? Stick with one and see if you can always come back to this. 
And the first cue that you should always follow again is the breath. I, I won't emphasize this enough because I see so many people coming out of breath and actually sweating in their practices, or in fact, this shouldn't be so much the case because we should be able to breathe enough to oxygenate our muscles as we move through and oxygenate our skin as we do our practice. But that's something else. And the last thing is take your time, right? Maybe explore different, different practices. If you're new, maybe don't start with vinyasa. Maybe we would start with some hatha. Maybe start with specific practices such as kundalini and so on. And seek teachers that have experience in their field, right? Because if you're new and you're coming to someone that has just started, then maybe they're already doing the best of what they can, but they cannot fully cater for you. Right? And having done many yoga teacher trainings, I know that a lot of new yoga teachers, when they come out, they already themselves have the stress of holding spaces, holding a class, leading a class for people that maybe they're not fully present to uh, your movements and how you're moving and maybe don't yet are comfortable with assisting and so on. So seeking maybe a teacher that have a bit more experience and therefore can you know, be already confident in holding class, leading class, and also has time and the experience to come to you and recommend some adjustments, uh, recommend some, or, uh, or adjust you, hands on adjust, or also adjust with the voice, recommend some breaks and poses. Uh, this could be also something that you may benefit from as well as a beginner wanting to start yoga. But my last thing that I was, I'm going to finish with is good job you, right? Because I think it's an amazing thing that you're wanting to invest a bit more into yourself. And I salute this and I honor this. And take your time, right? So yoga is a practice. It's not a workout, it's a work in, and you're doing this for you and not for anyone else. So if you come out of your mat a bit more stressed and anxious that when you arrived on it, it's not supporting you, right? So maybe seeking out what's happening within you and using some of these tools that I've just given to you in order to empower yourself while you're practicing as well. Take care and see you very soon on this channel.